Hello friends, welcome to my workshop. I don't typically record in here because I don't have a good way to record sound. So that's why I always record in a, a different location. But uh, this is my studio. You're just getting a tiny glimpse of it right here. This is my first experimentation with a kind of vlog format. So we'll see how this goes. I would want to watch this. I would think it's kind of interesting, but who knows? So this is going to be a vlog experience with me trying to crochet hack for lack of a better term. I don't know if there's a good term, but for me trying to crochet hack some sweatshirts. I have a paralyzing fear of making garments for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I have not, to date I've been crocheting for three and a half years, I have not made a garment for myself yet. But I've had this idea for modifying sweatshirts for probably two and a half years now. It's been rattling around my brain and I figured why not just make this together. I figure since I have absolutely no experience doing this that I need to start out testing what it's going to be like before I dive into my final. You know what I always like to say is do the work. So I am going to try to make the final product as easy on myself as possible by doing all the test work ahead of time. That way I'm not fighting making the final product. I know what I'm going to do. So I have this very old sweatshirt. Please don't judge me. I've had this for over 15 years and it's my sleepy time sweatshirt. I wear this to bed. The cuffs are falling apart and overall it's in like not great condition, but the body of it holding together just great. So what I'm going to do is experiment with this fabric. I'm probably going to cut the sleeves off of it just to work with the sleeve fabric and experiment uh, adding say cuffs on it or something like that. Is that bleach or paint? No, that's bleach. I was worried that this would be hard fabric to cut through. So, and the darning needles I have are not sharp at all. So now that I have the two sleeves cut off, I'm going to see how hard it is to sew into these. This is in no way sharp, this darning needle, but we'll see. Ooh, that does poke through. Yay, that'll make it easier on me. I'm gonna just thread it through. I'm going from the back this time. Out. All right, so now let's try to, now from the same hole that I just came out of, I'm inserting my needle. Now I'm gonna insert my needle up, go through the loop. Ooh. Cool! That's what it looks like just like from the top. When I go to crochet, I can crochet under it, under these two loops. I think, do I go back down the same loop? Through the same hole? Okay. <laughs> I feel pretty cool about that. Hit, come on. And see, I might have to invest in a sharper tapestry needle. Isn't that cute? All right, so I have reached all the way around. Now, I didn't, because I'm working the round, I have to like kind of finish this off. So what I'm gonna do is just go, instead of going back through that last loop I made, I'm just gonna go back down through it. And I think I'm gonna just tie some knots inside. 
so I have finished working my base round. Let's see, focus, focus. I finished working this base round of chains on my test piece of fabric, which will at least give me a surface to crochet onto. Exciting. Right, yep, just a number five hook. And I'm just gonna add this on like I was doing a border for a blanket. Do we want to just, we'll tie it on just to make it a little more secure and see how that fits. Now I'll chain one and single crochet into that stitch. Just single crochet all the way around and see how I like that. Because I'm working in single crochet and just the size of the base round chains, I do have some little, you know, uh, some gaps in there naturally. But from the outside, this actually looks quite nice. It's pretty seamless. I'm not mad about that. It like it looks like a finished edge, not like I did what I did of jamming something on there. Also, it feels doing that stitch it feels quite secure like i can pull on it i'm glad that i did that chain stitch instead of a blanket stitch to start it out okay for day one first attempt i'm quite happy with that i think it you know i'm really glad that it feels so secure like if you know if i wear it as a garment i'm not worried about this falling off or just getting snagged on something it is it is very secure so that's a big win the things that i have decided i need to work on so one i will have to pay attention to how many of those base stitches that i put on the final two so this is kind of a good test actually not for a cuff but for a whole sleeve so that's part of the design i'm thinking of so i feel like this is okay potentially for a sleeve but i have to work out how i want to handle the cuffs of the final garment so don't know how to handle that as of yet uh also if i want to work with this yarn i should practice with it and see how it handles on this so i'm going to do some more tests i may or may not film all of them but i'm quite pleased with how this first attempt went i'm sure like all things it's going to go horribly wrong at some point but I'll work it out. So, yay! All right, so let me show you what I have rolling around in my head for this project. My personal aesthetic is what I like to call evil queen. I also love really ostentatious outfits and uh, things with statement sleeves. So my dream for this design is to leave the body of the sweatshirt intact, but modify it so it fits a little differently. It fits a little tighter and a bit shorter. Not quite a crop top because that's not my jam, but to shorten it and make it a bit more fitted than a traditional loose sweatshirt. And then of course I want to crochet on these huge big statement sleeves and then have rows that are that go for faux very fluffy yarn. So a mixture of probably traditional uh, four weight acrylic yarn mixed with the go for faux. Uh, just so it has these alternating bands of really textured yarn I think would look so cool and so dramatic and be an absolute vibe. So yes, I want to be fabulous, just like my little drawing here. So this is what I did last night. Took my cut up sweatshirt, I added the beginnings of what could be a sleeve. Here's what it looks like on. It's insane. Again, this is just a prototype. This is just, oh, help me. Okay. So this is just me learning what this process is like. So here we can see, okay. Yeah, like it could be a sleeve. If I extended this, if I kept going, it would be a sleeve. Fine. So this is the sweatshirt that I intend to modify for the final. Okay, it's just a simple sweatshirt. I realize that this is a white room, so this might be a little bit harder to see. I actually really like how the sleeves fit me. 
which is hilarious because I'm going to cut off the sleeves. Ugh, it's fine. Now, I actually really like how the cuffs fit. So I'm thinking I'll cut off the cuffs from the sleeves and I might try to reuse these cuffs in the final. <sighs> okay. So I have the final sweatshirt on. Biggest difference probably in between this one and the prototype. This one has what I believe are called drop sleeves. Also, it is a little bit wider than I would like. The final, I think I want to be just a little more fitted. So I think at this point, I really do just need to bite the bullet. I am running out of time. I had wanted to complete this within four weeks and I'm not going to be able to do that. I think once I actually get underway, this actual project, I don't think will be very, very time consuming. I make blankets. And so this amount of crocheting is quite small in comparison. It's just the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. What I'm really worried about is the curveball that this yarn is going to throw at me. I did do just a little test swatch with it. I, uh, I'm worried. Wait, what size is this? Super bulky, really? So I'm going to also commit one of the cardinal sins of crochet that I'm going to combine different category weights of yarn. Uh, they're going to be synthetic. I'm, uh, you know, this is go for faux is a synthetic. If I am going to go with my sketch, which has like fluffiness, space, like flat, fluffy, space, kind of like these stripes almost, um, then I'm going to need probably a, I mean, I guess a worsted. I don't think I have time to do anything lighter or tighter. This was AC Moore Stores brand. Uh, I loved it. This was my yarn of choice up until AC Moore closed a couple years ago and broke my heart and I have never recovered. Oh my gosh, I have so much lint. I hope that's my hair. Ugh. Okay, everyone, I wrote down my steps just so we're all on the same page, meaning me. I would like to be on the same page as myself. Here we go. Step one, cut up sweatshirt, meaning the sleeves and the sides. Step two, pin and sew sweatshirt back together. Step three, create base chain on sleeves. And step four, crochet sleeves. That sounds reasonably easy. Why do I have a feeling it won't be easy? Okay, so I decided that I want to take about six inches off above the waistband. Forget it, I'm going to the big ones. I have made a crop top. Okay, so I have trimmed off the sleeves and trimmed up the bottom. And I just did the, you know, the, the thing where you flip it inside out and then just kind of safety pin it. So I took about an inch in on either side. Uh, since I've taken it in on the sides, the sleeve holes might be like a little bit big and they're doing, you know, this weird, it um, makes me think of Star Trek, the Kardashians, not Kardashians, but the Kardashians. They have like really big, wide shouldery profile things. So I want to see if I can just like make the armholes just a little bit smaller and then uh, sew this up the sides. I use safety pins so I didn't stab myself when I was trying this on. Currently, this is the only thread I have all purpose. I don't even know what polyester I'm gonna go with it. And I think I'm just gonna do what I believe is called a running stitch, which is just the super duper simple thing that babies learn how to do. I like this fit a little bit better. And if I can pull it off by adding the waistband back on, I'm going to just cut up there because that already has the seam on it. And the waistband, in, uh, I'm going to need to uh, shrink down anyway. This already is open on the end. I might try to put some of the elastic. I don't know, this one seems to make sense and is better for a waistband. I think as long as I add the elastic before I close the whole thing up, should be fine. So this is kind of elastic-y. Um, so I'm really just gonna go and try to pin this in place. Okay.
I have already messed up. Going ahead and I'm sewn on the waistband to the base of the sweatshirt. Great, love it. I'm feeling so confident about myself. Oh my gosh, this is going swimmingly, blah, 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 blah. I was not stretching the elastic of the waistband because one, I thought that I shouldn't, but mostly I forgot. Now, as I'm reaching the last segment, I do not have enough waistband to go around without stretching it. Uh, guess what? I'm not taking this out. We're forging ahead. I don't have time for that. I do love how, you know, it, like that looks pretty to me. Please, if you sew and you see this, no, you didn't. I may not have done the worst job in the world. I'm not quite done yet in that I still have this little space back here. Uh, so currently the waistband is not cinching this in at all. That's what I needed to do because I wanted to fit tightly here, but then have the sweatshirt part be loose. So it's just like a shorter sweatshirty thing. What I am gonna do is put some elastic through the waistband and hopefully pulling the elastic tight will give me the fit that I want. I am uh, optimistic. I have to stop for the night pretty soon, but I'm gonna see if I can just like put the elastic through the waistband. I feel like there must be a better way to do this. I mean, yes, but then also no. So I was able to get the elastic through and I just like real quick tied it off here. Trust the process, trust the process. Or just wing it, I don't know. Oh, I'm shedding. Hey friends, uh, April from the editing room here. Uh, I didn't love some of the footage that I got for this video, so I'm just gonna like jump in with a quick clip here that I am filming on my cell phone. This project did not go to plan. Using the gopher faux yarn was not successful. As much as I love it, it was so hard to see my stitches when trying to create a sleeve on this garment that uh, the sleeve wound up being just like absolutely gigantic because of my inexperience and the challenges of working with a textured yarn. I was not able to uh, get the desired effect. I made half a sleeve and then was just like, ugh, this is not working. So I started over just with regular four weight acrylic yarn. I really wanted to like complete this project, but I just was not able to do it in my initial vision. Moving on, just moving on. It's great, it's fine. And just to keep you in the loop, I didn't do anything different that I hadn't already shown you. I kept the chains that I had worked into the sleeve and the only thing different was literally just the yarn I was using. Sorry that I didn't wind up filming what the uh, part of the sleeve looked like with that. But, uh, let's get back to it. So I've got my sweatshirt cuff and I've turned it inside out and I'm gonna just quick and dirty. I have to try to get this on here. So maybe I'll do what I did at the beginning, take some white yarn and a darning needle. See if I can sew that on. All right, what I've decided to do is take my darning needle and some of the same color yarn, and I'm gonna see if I can cinch this sleeve so it's a little bit tighter, because my biggest hang up is the fact that there are fewer chains to weave into here as opposed to here. So I'm gonna see if I can just make this smaller. I didn't really do the best job narrating right here, but what I'm doing is I'm just taking my darning needle and my yarn, and I'm sewing in and out, up and down, underneath the stitches. And then I just pull on the yarn that I'm sewing through and cinching it so it's tighter. Not unlike what you do in like amigurumi or uh, what you're trying to like make a grain, like a middle of a grainy square. Now I wanna be careful with how much I cinch this because as I cinch it, it's not gonna have any elasticity and I want it to have that because the cuff is a bit elastic and it makes it easier for me to get my hand through. So if I make this too small, I won't be able to get my hand through. Okay, so that is closer. This is a five millimeter hook. I use this for absolutely everything. I might try to slip stitch attaching this. 
Okay, again, so I didn't narrate this part too well. All I'm doing is inserting my hook under the both parts of the V of the orange stitches and under both parts of the V on the white, and then just slip stitching them together. I know there's a blanket join that's pretty similar to this for granny squares. I'm really just bumbling my way through it, but that's all I'm doing here. The footage, unfortunately, wasn't super duper clear. So I have slip stitched all the way around this cuff. It's not, it's not pretty, but it seems to be doing the job. Let's see how this looks on. So I have not looked in a mirror yet so that I am seeing this for the first time in the camera. Let's see. Babe, do I love this? I love I love this shape. And the reason why I wanted to reuse these cuffs is because uh, in my experience, and this is why I, I don't make garments to date, as today, this is why I wanted to do this project, is because over time, the yarn will stretch out and the cuffs will lose their shape. Like even if this stretches out and gets a little looser, the cuff is gonna hold on much longer. I just had to run all the way downstairs to the garage and <laughs> made my husband stop what he was doing in the garage to show him this thing I did. So now I know how to make this sleeve. Oh my God. So getting back to it. I may not film every part of this for you guys to see because a lot of it you've seen before. I don't think I have enough of this orange yarn to do another sleeve down here. So I might have to change this. I think I have enough of the blue. All right, so I sewed on the base chain. As you can see on the other sleeve, I started with a round of white and then went blue and then slowly I added more blue, less white, and that's kind of what the transition is. Me doing color changes is a little bit, it is not the most interesting part of this process. So I'm just gonna show you how I uh, start working the sleeve over here and then I'm probably just gonna like mostly skip ahead. Here, all I'm doing is taking a strand of white yarn and I am pulling it under one of the chains so I can tie it on and then I'm just gonna chain one and single crochet. Then I'm just gonna work a round of single crochet all around to get my base round. So I'm just inserting my hook under the chain. So I did just crochet all the way around. Now I'm really just going to be making this sleeve using the half double crochet stitch. I am just gonna do that off camera because I desperately need to get this project done. We're just gonna have to cut to the final and see how that looks. Wish me luck. Ta-da! So this is what the final piece turned out to be. And to be entirely honest, I cannot say that I uh, absolutely love it. Was this the piece that I was intending to make? No. Am I completely satisfied with the kind of piece I made? <laughs> no. Did I learn new things? Yes. Am I proud of myself? Big yes. So the vibe I was trying to capture here was like 80s inspired sweatshirt kind of fabulous, like 80s plus fabulous. I just don't think I exactly pulled that off. And while this has a lot of the elements of garments that I do like, I don't know that they've like come together. It's got like a big statement sleeve, but does the big statement sleeve work with the sweatshirt? I don't know. Yes, I did size the torso of the garment to fit me a little more closely than a traditional like very loose blousey sweatshirt. It is still like very bunchy on the size. You know, I feel like the waistband probably should have been uh, sized down a little more or something like that. Uh, it is still bunching quite a lot in the back. So yeah, overall, I can't say that this really feels like a cohesive garment. I may wind up taking these sleeves off and trying something else. If nothing else, I hope that you enjoyed watching me uh, make this modified crochet hacked sweatshirt today and i hope it was inspiring to you drop in the comments if you like seeing content like this and i really hope to make more of it but you know i kind of need to know if people are interested in seeing it okay i'll see you later love you bye